Hi there. <clears throat> Before I read my story, I do, I was inspired by the poetry tonight. And as I'm sitting out there, I wrote one just, I think it's special this week and I think it's gonna speak to a lot of us. Don Shooter can suck my dick. <laughs> Mom made me gay. In the suitcase out of which I lived that summer were all of my clothes, a Panasonic tape recorder with cord and plug, one cassette tape, ELO's greatest hits, and two paperback books, Patton by Ladislas Farrago, a waterlogged copy missing the top half of the front cover, and The Girl, The Gold Watch, and Everything by John D. McDonald. It also held the yellow legal pad on which I scribbled that quote the morning after it was said to me. Weary from 30 odd years on the run from demons I had yet to fully comprehend, my companion spoke his assertion in the Blythe California motel room that was to be our temporary home that June, a ground floor room near the street. Counting the one we stayed in my first two nights in California, we lived out of five lackluster motels between the middle of June to the middle of August, and this one was typical. Two beds, two chairs, a table, a color TV, and the disinfected, stale smell unique to cheap motels and adult bookstores. All secondhand smoke and bartered orgasm. Outside the room was a pool that sat in the center of a grassy rectangle under the shade of a few palm trees. In the time we were in Blythe, I think I used the pool only once, as it was a busy motel and there always seemed to be at least one family going for a swim. Exceptionally talkative, but painfully shy, I was self-conscious about talking to girls, and I didn't want him talking to families with young sons. Mom made me gay. He said this to me as we lay naked in the bed nearest the window and then he reached his well-tanned arm to take the next of that day's 40 cigarettes from the soft pack of pools sitting next to a scratched silver Timex on the nightstand. Flicking his Zippo with his left hand, he drew in and snapped it shut, taking the cigarette out of his mouth as he put the lighter down. Except for the sliver of light that iced the heavy chocolate curtains, the room was dark. Pausing only to inhale and exhale, he recounted childhood beatings as they watched him stare at a poorly illumined spot on the yellow-white ceiling. I wasn't a writer yet, just 13 years old and still a virgin gatherer of stories. And the most interesting stories were always the ones about my mother's family, all of which centered on her maternal grandmother. Lust, betrayal, physical and emotional abuse, addiction, depression, what wasn't to love? It was my 11th year when I began pestering my elders with questions and the idea that Granny, this gnarled woman with the roomy dodger blue eyes, could have authored all of this dysfunction was simply fantastic. The most interesting story, the one that triggered my curiosity, was about how my grandparents were step-siblings, Pop-Up's father siring the final four of his 12 children with Nana's mother. And it was the next to last in that quartet who turned away from me and stubbed out his cigarette. Uncle Frank began his seduction of me when I was just 11 years old. I use the word seduction purposely here, not in an effort to minimize what he did, but because we don't have a better word to describe the way he groomed me to be abused by him. It took him a whole year of gifts, attention, and treating me like a man treats a woman to lead up to the Friday night where he first touched me. He molested me for a period of a year and a half before anyone in my family discovered what he had done. Although people knew. I met people who knew. I met a grown man who was another of his victims who knew and said and did nothing. And when my family did find out, not one person called the police and reported it. That would have been embarrassing, you see. Nor did anyone engage a counselor or a therapist for me because, again, that would have been embarrassing too. My mother says now that I didn't want them to make an appointment, so they didn't, and I don't remember that. But I was just 14 and that shouldn't have mattered, should it? They told him to stay away, but he didn't. 
And after a year or so, I would show up to family gatherings and there he would be. After a few of these, I asked one of my aunts, his sister, why he was there. I asked her, don't you know what he did to me? And she could only cry and answer, he's family. That aunt was long gone when I transitioned over 25 years later. But so many other people were still around, people who would let him come around and never once said anything to him. And for so many of them, it was more impossible to allow themselves to be around me, a trans woman, than it was for them to be around him, a pedophile. And so I moved from Pennsylvania to Arizona, from dark to light, from exclusion of birth family to creating a new family that keeps on growing. I chose to heal, and that was the most important step. My family, the people whom I should have been able to expect to be there for me, wasn't there. Not when I was molested, not when I chose to be born, and not now, as I thrive. But there would be no thriving without my having made the choice to be well, to be whole, to be happy. I have surrounded myself with people I love and who love me, and that has made all the difference. That, and choosing every day when I wake up to keep healing. Mom made me gay. He said this again, the man with the salt and pepper hair and plush tenor voice. And then he said nothing else. Instead, he just closed his eyes and wrapped his arm tightly around me, as if I could somehow anchor him safely in storms already set out to sea. Thank you.